Okay, so we are in McDonald's. We have a nice background music, but luckily, luckily it's not so so loud, which is very good. And uh, let's let's pray, dear God. Thank you for this moment. Thank you. We are gathered here. We came here because of you. Oh, thank you that you have shown yourself to us. That we see the greatness. In Jesus' name, we pray. <clears throat> Amen. So here I have like short notes and uh, just few few thoughts about this amazing principle. You know, we speak about this uh, very often in the church. It's good. It's okay. And. Uh, in the Matthew, this is the verse that like we all know, uh, Matthew 16, verse 18, Jesus speaking about the church. And uh, Jesus Matthew, said, uh, 16, 16, 18, 16, 18, chapter 16, verse 18. And here Jesus speaks to Peter and he says, I say also unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And now, like, uh, before we read this verse second time, we can think about it, and we can think this way. <clears throat> you know, you may have a people, and they will say, uh, this first statement is wrong. They will say, I will build my church. You know, it's wrong, because it's you who is building your church it's all wrong or you can say I will build his church oh it sounds better because now you are building his church but it's still you who is building it or you can say he will build my church that's also wrong now it's Jesus who is building it but he's building it for you your church is wrong but in this verse we see <coughs> It's he who will build his church. Jesus says, I will build my church. And when we understand this, it's amazing that it's a God's work and uh, he is building his church. And you know, uh, recognizing that it's his church keeps us from changing it. Because it's not our ideas how we want to do the things, but it's God who said it in the scripture it's his church and he defined the church in the scriptures how the church looks like how to run the church uh, and so on so it's his church and we have instructions how it looks and God is doing it and it's, it's amazing it's beautiful and and uh, we can look at a few words in the Bible we speak about the church so in this in this first one this word for uh, church is ecclesia you know we spoke about this on in the bible school on wednesday uh, ek kaleo means to call out people or basically to do a gathering you know when you're calling somebody out from somewhere you say hey come out of the woods and come here to this place so it means called out people or gathering that's one word for the church another one is for example in hebrews chapter 10 25 when uh, god says <clears throat> you know uh, uh don't forget to assemble yourself you know uh assembling yourself together as you see that the day is approaching of the lord and this word here for coming together is Soon agoge. We have the word synagogue from this, and in the Greek it means soon, which means together, and then agoge means to come. So basically, this is a place when people come together. You know, and and, and studying these words and understanding the principle of the church, it's beautiful because we realize it's not a building, it's not a beautiful windows with the pictures of the saints and the statues and the icons you know it's nothing to do with this you know God is building his church 
And as we see from the word number one and number two, ecclesia and soon agoge, it means calling people together, gathering people, and coming together. <clears throat> and then there is another word used in the Bible, and it's basileia. You know, we have the word basilic from this. And when you say basileia, people make this conclusion basilic, it's like building, you know, it's like sacred building. But Basilea means actually kingdom. And the church is reflecting God's rule on earth. So when we come to church, when we gather, basically this is a church right now. I know this is not a Sunday morning, but still it's a church. We gather as a church. The people are the church. So we gathered, uh, we came together, and here is this Basilea, which is the God's kingdom on earth in the church or God's rules you know that's why we are a little bit different than the world you know we we have different morals you know uh, we do not do certain things uh, we do certain things you know we could speak about you know we know about the salvation we know about process of sanctification you know we are saved through the blood of Jesus forever and then we go and we are being sanctified step by step. You know, the world doesn't know these things. Uh, in the world, there is do and you get paid. In God's kingdom, it's different. In God's kingdom is, you know, we did things and God took the penalty upon himself. You know, in the world, it's usually like you, you, are, you have to pay for the damage. You know, with the God's people, it's different. So there's Basileia, God's kingdom in the gathering. And then uh, another word which defines the church is agape. You know, uh, in uh, Jude chapter 1, it says that uh, we have these agape feasts. And meaning people gather and it's historical fact and we also do it. You know, you have a table and you minister to people and during the food ministry you know you you share the love of god and, and the word of god and so on so uh agape feasts you know uh showing the love one to another that's the church you know that's the church gathering you know when when we do a barbecue after the church you know we invite people that's agape feast you know it's because of love it's not because of as we said you know Servena Zvezda. Uh, playing somebody, you know, I mean, we like it, but that's not the main thing. You know, the main thing is the love of God in our midst. And the same, same idea was already in the Old Testament when we, when we look uh, in the book of Exodus, uh, when Moses built the tabernacle, or we could say the tent of congregation. Sometimes it's called the tent of meeting. The Hebrew word is moed, and it means <coughs> it means uh, appointment or congregation. Appointment means, you know, when when you make your calendar and you say, okay, Monday, 5 p.m., or you say Sunday in the morning, <coughs> you make appointment, meaning you have a certain date and time, and you are coming. This was the Old Testament gathering, the tent of meeting. The congregation, when they met before the Lord, they had appointment with the Lord. The Hebrew word speaks about this. Uh, and they met in a place of dwelling, when God is dwelling. So, thinking about the church, we know it's, it's this word, Ecclesia, called out people, Sunagoge, people who came together, Basileia, it's a place where there is a God's rule. It's agape, it's a, a revelation of love of God, an expression of love of God among the people. It's this Hebrew word moed, which means uh, appointment. You know, you set up a date and you come and gather. That's what we do Sunday mornings. So this is this is amazing uh, that all the words for the church have this one amazing meaning gathering you know 
it's not well I will come to church and uh, to some big temple and I sit in the corner by myself and I will do my own meditation before God you know as people think that's all wrong it's not even like I will sit at home and watch something on the, on the TV I mean we can learn some knowledge but that's not the gathering you know the gathering is missing there uh, well, it's not even as people say well we are part of God's universal church you know once we believe we are part of the church which is truth uh, but not in the sense of gathering because just to believe doesn't mean that you are gathered we will be gathered one day second Thessalonians chapter 2 it says that I beseech you brethren by our gathering unto the Lord you know speaking about the final gathering the rapture uh, we will be gathered but the word of the church in its essence as we saw everywhere it's about gathering meaning gathering in the local church so for every believer the question is like do you have your church do you have a place where you go do you have a pastor teacher are you coming there at a point in time like in the Old Testament you know uh, for us Sunday morning you know are you going there are you gathering is there the love of God is there uh, feasting on the love of God is there uh, God's rule revealed is there this together you know coming are we called ones we have a call in our life so this is so amazing just to understand that God is doing it and it's all about coming together like now you know we came together you know this is it it's not about the the other stuff that people may be focused on and this is even in the beginning of the Bible and at the end you know right from the beginning God was coming in the cool of the day when he created Adam and Eve and he was coming to fellowship with them and then when Adam have sinned God is calling in Genesis chapter 3 verse 9 he says Adam where are you you know he's gathering him back he says where are you come back uh, so right from the beginning even before the fall God was fellowshipping with people when they have sinned God was calling them and gathering them together and we can see this everywhere you can see this in the Moses gathering people and getting them out of slavery uh, Noah was gathering people in a ship uh, <clears throat> uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah God wanted to gather people so he gathered Lot and his family and waiting for 50 you know 45 righteous you know 30 righteous people who would gather together to him uh, so God is in this business of uh, redemption and gathering and then as we said at the end of the scripture you know God will uh, gather unto him people second Thessalonians and then then in the book of uh, Revelation also <clears throat> and and the last point uh, for the gathering when God is calling the gathering in the in the numbers chapter 10 verse 2 it says God gives instructions for the gathering so in the numbers 10 verse 2 and he says you shall make two trumpets of silver of a whole piece and you shall make them that you may use them for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camp and this is this is so great picture when God is calling people together he is using silver trumpets imagine you know, Moses and his leadership they take these silver trumpets and there is a gathering there is an assembly you know come together and we know what the silver speaks about uh, it speaks about the uh, money buying redeeming you know you have a silver coins you go to the market and you buy something so the gathering already before it starts is carrying the spirit of redemption God is bringing first the redeemed people because we are redeemed and second he's bringing people to redeem them 
you know, you may bring unbelievers with you to redeem them or even to redeem us from uh, from many other troubles or whatever else is uh, there possible. So it's the church, it's the local gathering, you know, where people hear from God and when they get healed and then remember the book of Revelation when God speaks to the churches. Have you noticed that when he speaks to church of Laodicea, the church of Sardius, you know, and others, uh, he, he, church of Ephesus, you could name them, he has always different message for every church. You know, a little bit different. Because God is addressing the churches and their maybe problems. So this is very important, you know, to be gathered in the local assembly, because in that place God can, God can speak very precisely to us. You know, we can hear God anywhere else, on the mountain, you know, we can hear him in your uh, room when you read and study the Bible, of course, but God has chosen this. It's God's idea. He said, I will build my church. So it's God's idea. It's described by God how he wants to have it. And and uh, these all these words are speaking about this coming together. And there is like no single life Christianity, you know, uh, you cannot be alone because uh, if you are alone and not gathered with people, then uh, you cannot properly use your gifts because the gifts are for the, for the church, for the body, you know, in Romans 12, uh, the gifts are for the body and uh, then you are alone, you know, you cannot be build up encouraged you cannot practice forgiveness you cannot express your love you know uh, you are for yourself and that's not God's design and God's plan so the church in so many words speak about gathering and it's so beautiful so you know I really like it when we see church this way uh, not just building or some duty but really we assemble around the presence of God and as we said, there is his presence, there is his word, there is his healing. And it's the same like if Jesus would come today, you know, uh, would we gather around him? Or would we do our own things, our own business, you know? And uh, uh, yes, we would gather. It's it's powerful. So, so uh, that's all from me. Amen.